Before I begin today's episode, I want to take a moment to extend my sincere appreciation to Midwest Fire. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you know that Midwest Fire runs an ad at the beginning of every episode. This is because they're the show's sponsor. Their financial support helps to offset the costs of the show's production, editing, hosting, marketing, and distribution. Yes, it does cost money to produce and distribute a weekly radio show. In 2015, Midwest Fire contacted me and asked if they could lend their support to my mission and sponsor the show. I was completely blown away by their generosity. But before I could accept the offer, I had to go see their operations for myself firsthand to get a feel for their factory and the apparatus that they build. And I'd be quite honest, I was blown away with what I saw. They're all poly design fire apparatuses are just amazing. They work directly with the customers, never through dealers, to keep the cost down and the communications consistent during the entire sales and manufacturing process. They cut out the middleman and anyone who's bought a truck who has to deal with that middle person knows how frustrating that can be. And creating long-term relationships with their customers are the hallmark of their operation. They're able to devise state-of-the-art approaches to meet your department's needs. They take pride in their work and their ability to produce some of the most innovative fire apparatus on the market. Check them out, MidwestFire.com. And thanks again, Midwest Fire, for supporting the Situational Awareness Matters mission. Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. Hi, this is Captain Joe Pernesti from the Illyria, Ohio Fire Department, and you're listening to Dr. Richard C. Gassaway on SA Matters Radio. His mission is simple. He wants us to see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. Hello, and welcome to Episode 88 of the Situational Awareness Matters Radio Show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision-making for individuals and teams who work in high-risk, high-consequence environments. The SA Matters mission is simple, to help you see the bad things coming and time to avoid bad outcomes. I'm coming to you today from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I'm in town to deliver three programs, one for the Munhall Borough of Fire, one for the Peters Township Fire Department, and one for the Swiss Vale Fire Department. In today's episode, we're going to discuss whether incident commanders should wear turnout gear while commanding incidents. The answer may not be as simple as it appears. Let's jump into our feature segment. Commanders and turnout gear. I recently read with great interest a very long thread on social media about whether or not an incident commander should wear turnout gear at a fire scene. As my focus and passion is on improving first responder situational awareness, I would like to address this issue from that perspective. The feedback on the social media feed was, as expected, all over the place, with some participants saying, the commander should be in full turnout gear, some saying the commander should not be in turnout gear, and some displaying the typical and expected disdain for management and saying the chiefs should just stay in their offices. Editorial comments lacking maturity aside, the question of whether an incident commander should wear turnout gear is one I feel often during my 50 Ways to Kill a First Responder program, so I thought I'd take the matter up here. There are essentially 
two fundamental issues at hand. First, should the incident commander be close enough to the hazards to require turnout gear? And two, should the incident commander set the example for others by wearing turnout gear? Command Location The location of the commander and his or her proximity to the hazards should dictate the need for structural firefighting protective ensemble. If the commander is going to be close enough to require gear for protection, then obviously gear should be worn. That one seems simple. But should the incident commander be that close to the action? That question perhaps gets more to the heart of the issue. Speaking from the perspective of brain science and situational awareness, there are some fundamental things to know before we begin the debate. By definition, an incident commander must be far enough back from the action to be able to see the big picture incident in order to develop and maintain situational awareness. The cognitive demands, meaning the brain capacity, needed to command an emergency incident with multiple companies working are enormous. In many instances, these demands use all the incident commander's brain capacity and more. A commander who is close to the action may feel compelled to become hands-on, which can impact his or her ability to command. Being hands-on causes the commander to be task-oriented, not big-picture oriented. Being hands-on also requires some of the commander's limited cognitive capacity, in other words, some of the commander's brain power, to perform the hands-on tasks. This can diminish the commander's ability to process and comprehend important command level information. Under stress, people become creatures of habit. If a commander has spent years serving in a hands-on firefighter or company officer role, and let's hope that he or she has, under stress there may be a compelling urge to perform hands-on activities. Being close to the action and being donned in protective gear may be enough to facilitate hands-on action. It's a psychological thing. In the seat or in the street. I also get asked an awful lot about whether a commander should be situated in a vehicle or outside of a vehicle. This is a hotly debated topic. Those who command from inside of a vehicle, I'll call them the seat commanders, have a list of reasons why they prefer to be located there. Likewise, those who command from outside of a vehicle, I'll call them the street commanders, also have a list of reasons as to why they prefer to be located in the street. I'm not the one to serve as the judge on where it's best to command from. First and foremost, I'd say command from where you're most comfortable, from the position that, that taps and uses your command abilities and intuition to their fullest. I will, however, make some observations based on my research and interviews with experienced commanders. Seat Commander Advantages 1. The commander will be in a physical position that will likely reduce distractions and interruptions, which are significant barriers to situational awareness. 2. The commander will be exposed to less noise, which can improve the ability to hear radio traffic, which in turn can improve situational awareness. 3. The commander will not be in a position to become hands-on, 
which improves the dedication of cognitive resources to the act of commanding, which improves situational awareness. 4. The commander is in an environment of controlled light and temperature. Diminished environmental comforts can impact situational awareness. 5. The commander is in an environment that improves access and use of technology, such as mobile data commute computers, command boards, and worksheets. Data management improves situational awareness. Now let's look at some of the street commander advantages. 1. The commander is able to provide face-to-face -face instructions to scene personnel. 2. This can reduce miscommunications and improve situational awareness. 3. The commander is mobile and able to physically see more of the incident. Capturing more clues and cues can improve situational awareness. 4. The commander is in a physical position to use more of his or her senses to prompt intuition, which can improve situational awareness. 5. The commander is in a position to directly observe the physical stress and fatigue of personnel, which can improve situational awareness. 6. The commander is in a position of increased stress, which to some degree can heighten awareness and improve performance. My personal experience I've commanded from both positions, the seat and the street, and have experienced firsthand both the advantages and the disadvantages of each. Early in my career, I was clearly a street commander, and there was nothing anyone could do or say to convince me otherwise. There was no way I was ever going to sit in a car during a structure fire. I would have been so out of my element that I would have gone crazy. My comfort was being amongst the action. However, as time passed and I was introduced slowly to the concept of being a seat commander and the advantages it provided to my effectiveness, I saw a marked improvement in my ability to hear the radio to reduce my distractions and my ability to keep track of personnel and very importantly my ability to think ahead of the incident as reluctant as I was at first I developed a comfort and a preference for being a seat commander notwithstanding the occasional chiding I took from firefighters who thought that sitting in the comfortable car while they were out in the elements was wimpy. I think they appreciated how my location directly impacted their safety. If you are the incident commander, wear turnout gear at the right times for the right reasons. This includes while working in environments where your health and wellness might be adversely impacted if you were not in turnout gear. Wearing turnout gear to set an example is not a good explanation for why the incident commander should don gear that can be hot and uncomfortable. Let's take the football coach for an example. The coach stays on the sidelines and coaches the team to success. The coach does not wear a uniform that the players wear the coach does not need a helmet and shoulder pads to be effective. In fact, it might impede effectiveness. Players who have the mindset that leaders set poor examples by not wearing gear are struggling to understand the role of the commander. The commander who feels he or she must wear turnout gear to set a good example may also be struggling to understand the role that they play as the commander. 
On a side note, many times when firefighters die in structure fires, the incident commander was performing hands-on activities instead of commanding from a position where they could see the big picture. If you've experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to have a platform to share your lessons learned with others, please contact me by visiting the SA Matters website and clicking on the Contact Us link on the top of the home page. Think about this for a minute. The lessons learned from your near-miss event could save the life of another responder. If you want to share your experience, contact me. If you haven't subscribed to the SA Matters radio podcast show yet, please take a moment to go over to iTunes or Stitcher Radio. And while you're there, please consider leaving some feedback for me about the show. And if you like the show, give it a five-star review. This is really important because it inspires me to work harder for you. A lot of effort goes into producing and recording and editing a show, and it really just feels good when somebody gives some feedback or gives it a five-star review. That will also help others to find the show. I'm really excited to announce the release of my third book in the Situation Awareness Matters series. This book contains 30 lessons for improving first responder situation awareness and decision making under stress. Over 300 copies of the book have been sold on my website and through Amazon.com. If you're interested in getting a copy, go to SA Matters website and click on the store link. If you know of a business that might be interested in supporting the Situational Awareness Matters mission with a sponsorship, I'm seeking a few select sponsors to help offset the cost of running the website, social media, podcast, YouTube channel, the monthly newsletter, and everything else that I have that is free content. The website has enjoyed over a million visits, and those visitors have downloaded over 4 million pages of content. New blog articles are posted every Friday. A newsletter is distributed to thousands monthly. And the podcast listeners have downloaded over 75,000 episodes. There's an opportunity also to sponsor the webinar and live events. So if you know of a business that'd like to get their message in front of my visitors, subscribers, or supporters, ask them to contact me through the SA Matters website by clicking on the Contact Me link on the home page. Here's hoping we can pick up an additional sponsor or two and be able to keep all this free content flowing to you. Thanks again to Midwest Fire, our first and currently only sponsor of this podcast show. Without your generous support, it couldn't be done. I want to take a moment to thank the departments and the organizations that have hosted recent Situation Awareness Matters tour stops. Your efforts to bring this valuable and powerful training on situational awareness and high-risk, high-consequence decision-making to your members and to others in your region are greatly appreciated. So thank you to the Minnesota Symposium on Terrorism and Emergency Preparedness for allowing me to be the keynote presenter at your conference, the Scott Township Fire Department in Evansville, Indiana for two days hosting programs there, the SBM Fire Department in Spring Lake Park, Minnesota, the International Association of Fire Chiefs for allowing me to do a presentation at the Company Officer Development Symposium in Phoenix, Arizona. And by the time this episode airs, I will have completed the program at the Munhall Volunteer Fire Bureau in Munhall, Pennsylvania, and the Peters Township Fire Department in McMurray, Pennsylvania. And if you're interested in attending an upcoming program, you can join me tomorrow night, December 29th, at the Swissvale Fire Department in Swissville, Pennsylvania, January 5 to 6 at 5 and 6 at the Savage Fire Department in Savage, Minnesota, January 8 through 10 at the Utah Winter Fire School in St. George, Utah, January 13th at the University of North Carolina Charlotte Fire and Emergency Services Leadership Institute, January 16th at the Iosca County Firefighters Association in East Towis, Michigan, January 23 and 24. I'll be doing a keynote address at the South Carolina Firefighters Association Winter Conference in Columbia, South Carolina, February 1 and 2 at the Alaska Fire Chiefs Association Conference in Juneau, Alaska, 
February 6th at the Enfield Fire Department in Enfield, Connecticut. February 7th at the Ellesmere Fire Department in Del Mar, New York. February 9th, the Grand Rapids Fire Department in Minnesota. February 10th, the Eveleth Fire Department in Minnesota. February 11th, the Lutzen Fire Department in Minnesota. February 16th, the West Metro Fire Department in Minnesota. February 25th, the Addison Fire Department in Texas. February 26th to 28th, the NSA Winter Conference in Austin, Texas. And March 1st, I'll be giving the opening keynote at the Los Angeles County Fire Department Fire Officer Conference in Pasadena, California. If you're interested in attending an upcoming Situational Awareness Matters tour stop, head over to the SA Matters website, click on the blue box on the right side of the home page labeled Upcoming Events Schedule. Here's hoping there's a tour stop near you and we'll get a chance to meet up. If you're interested in hosting a Situational Awareness Matters tour stop event, for 2016, just go to the website and click on the Contact Us link and we'll get something set up for you. If you're not a member of the SA Matters community of learners yet, please consider joining. There are more than 5,000 members connected on the SA Matters community sharing ideas about how to improve situational awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to train members on how to be critical thinkers and resilient problem solvers. Membership is free. It's free. And when you sign up, I'll send you a special report that I've created just for new members called 25 Best Practices for Improving First Responder Safety. That's free, too. If you're not a member yet, head over to the SA Matters website. Click on the red box on the right side of the home page, the red one, that says Free Membership. As a reminder, every episode of the SA Matters radio show has a corresponding show notes page on the SA Matters website. All the recent episodes scroll on the home page. For the older episodes, go to essaymatters.com forward slash and enter the episode number, which is always mentioned at the start of every show. So, for example, if you wanted to access episode 70, open your internet browser, essaymatters.com forward slash 70, and that'll take you to the page that has the show notes. The show notes page contains additional information and resources about the episode, and depending on who the guest is, there might also be incident scene pictures, video, and audio and the contact information for the guest. On the show notes page, you can also ask questions and leave your feedback about the episode. If you haven't got connected with me yet on social media, consider doing that. You can go to Twitter at Rich Gassaway or at SA Matters on Twitter, either at Rich Gassaway or at SA Matters on Twitter. The SA Matters Twitter community has more than 16,000 followers of our mission. Thanks to everybody on Twitter who's coming along for the ride. You can also get connected on Facebook and LinkedIn. On Facebook, I have a private Facebook page. You can join. That's free. Just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SA Matters. You can get a coupon code there for 50% off on the newest book, SA Matters Volume 3. So join if you're interested in getting 50% off on that new book. On LinkedIn, you can just search for Rich Gasaway. Thanks to everybody who's connected with me on Facebook and LinkedIn. I really appreciate your support of the mission there, too. Well, that's it. Episode 88 is complete. Thank you to our sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to all of our live event hosts. And thank you, our listeners, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there. And may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com. <laughs>